Welcome to the Engineering Influence Podcast from American Council of Engineering Companies coming to you from our 2024 Fall Conference in New Orleans. And uh, it's not all about engineering and uh, the design side. It's also about the material side here. And I'm very pleased to be joined by Eric Faraby. He is the Senior Director uh, Director of Technical Services, right, with the uh, American Concrete Paving Association. That's correct. And uh, you held a uh, an event a little bit earlier today on uh, low carbon uh, materials. Uh, how did that go as far as uh, attendance and interest? Went really well. The, yeah. You know, we had a small group, but they were very engaged and very interested in these low carbon transportation material grants uh, that provide an opportunity for them. So. Now, the the interest in really of, of low emission. Uh, materials, I mean, transportation materials, is that really a, a direct result of the IIJ funding and, and more interest by government to incentivize the use of low carbon materials and emissions? So that's certainly a part of it. Yeah. Um, the Inflation Reduction Act basically dedicated $2 billion towards implementing low carbon transportation materials mm -hmm. in transportation projects. And so that's what this uh, program is really about, is about implementation of those materials. Mm -hmm. uh, the $2 billion is split up such that $1.2 billion is focused on state highway department transportation mm -hmm. agencies, so DOTs. And uh, the other $800 million is focused on more local agencies. And yeah. so all of that is dedicated towards trying to make low carbon materials more of a reality and an everyday practice mm -hmm. rather than um, kind of the exception to the rule. Yeah. I, from a from a national standpoint, I mean, every state department of transportation is different. Um, you know, in your experience, who's leading the way in adoption? Whether whether or not the funding is there from the federal government, or at least putting in the 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 mandates that, or not mandates, but trying to push towards low carbon emission materials, and who's kind of still lagging behind. I have an idea of what your answer is going to be, but I'd like to hear it from you. Oh sure, uh, yeah, no, there so. There are about 10 states yeah. that have that are kind of what we would consider ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. They've you know, their state uh, governments have already passed yeah. legislation to try and push towards lower carbon materials. Mm -hmm. um, Colorado is probably the state that is the furthest along. I figured as much. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so they're very interested, obviously, in trying to lower the impact of their materials. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're actually probably one of the states that everybody looks to in terms mm -hmm. of how do we get these lower carbon materials? Yeah. How do we quantify them? Mm -hmm. And uh, how do we make them more of a reality? Yeah. Um, so Colorado is the leader. California is right behind, mm -hmm. along with some of those on the West Coast, as well as, yeah. you know, your Minnesota's, Illinois, New York mm -hmm. um, are ahead of the curve now. Yeah. You can look along political lines sometimes and see the ones that are lagging behind, uh, or, not paying I, attention to this quite as much. Or climate related. I mean, I imagine the the, the DOTs who don't do as much work, or, or or you know the what Colorado. I mean, their their weather changes all the time. They have to keep their maintenance up. They have to keep on investing in roadways. They have to keep on working on things. And I would imagine that that alone is enough for them to look at materials that are a little bit more environmentally friendly. It's an environmentally friendly state to begin with. California, of course always it seems to be a leader with the other states follow um you know from a engineering side from a from a i guess trying to figure out from the design side with the low carbon uh, uh materials you know how much of a of a sell is it for the end client for that dot to say yeah yes we will accept the design with those materials in place is it, is it more the engineers pushing it or is more those DOTs that are trying to stay ahead of the curve? Uh, I would say it's a mixture of everyone. Yeah. Um, in some cases, it's the DOTs that are really pushing for trying to get lower carbon mm -hmm. materials. In some cases, uh, it's the DOT looking at the Federal Highway Administration yeah. and seeing them be a leader and trying to say, hey, we want to we want to improve our materials and this is one way that we can do it. Yeah. In some cases, it's actually industry pushing and saying, hey, we can deliver on this mm -hmm. um, just as long as you challenge us and allow us to try these different materials in a controlled way yeah. um, that provides that opportunity. And so FHWA is definitely a leader with this, mm -hmm. with that, uh, with the LCT program. Yeah. Um, right now, I think 39 states applied for grants, which means they, they're in line to receive around $35 million yeah. uh, to help support this implementation. And I mean, coming up to reauthorization, of course, you know, you have the Inflation Reduction Act as a standalone piece of legislation, but looking at IIJA, what's going to come next as far as service uh, reauthorization goes, what, what are your out, what's your outlook right now? I mean, it's, it's hard to 
crystal ball this because we don't know exactly what's going to happen in 15, 14 days from now <laughs> and who's going to be in control of Congress. But, you know, how... I will, you know, what's what's the association working for looking ahead to reauthorization in, in, in a service title? Yeah. Uh, so absolutely. When we're looking about looking at transportation funding, yeah. we're obviously concerned with whichever way that's going to go, yeah. whichever way the election goes. But honestly, when we look at transportation funding and in infrastructure specifically, it's something that tends to be bipartisan that yeah. both sides want better transportation and want mm. to make sure that it's funded appropriately. They just have different perspectives on how to go about it. Yeah. Um, but we're optimistic that that's going to happen. Uh, it might have some small impacts on this LCTM program, but mm -hmm. honestly, we think that it's far enough along that it, it will main will continue to be a reality yeah. even past the election, especially with how far along they are in the process and how quickly they're trying to get uh, FHWA is trying to get the program rolled out and, yeah. uh, and underway. It, and it just makes sense. I mean, once the materials are there and they're readily available and you can actually put them into the mix, it makes sense to use materials which are, you know, friendly to the environment or, or you know, emit, you know, less carbon or, or a net positive for the environment. So hopefully that just continues to build. Absolutely. I, uh, the more of these lower impact mm -hmm. materials that we have that can still maintain our durability yeah. and our longevity of our materials, uh, the better off we're all going to be and the better off our infrastructure is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, your your association and our association are working together on these things. And I think that it's important that our members out there understand that uh, that that you're out there and that you provide some some technical support for that. You know, if they're interested in learning more, how should they find you? Uh, so absolutely. The ACPA, uh, the Concrete Pavement Association, has put together some resources, but we've really pulled together a group of individuals in this uh, reduced carbon concrete consortium that we put together. Um, and so we're obviously focused on concrete materials, mm -hmm. but there are similar efforts going on for steel and asphalt and plate mm -hmm. glass, which are the four materials for LCTM. And so yeah. we can certainly connect uh, anybody on those materials as well. But we have a lot of resources already prepared such that with the concrete side, we can hit the ground running as soon yeah. as these grants are announced. Awesome. Well, fantastic. I appreciate you taking the time because uh, I know it's busy. It's uh, running around a uh, uh, big conference, but I'm glad that you had an audience there that was very energized and interested in the subject. So uh, keep it going. We'll still uh, we'll keep in contact with you and let's see what happens legislatively that might impact the program. Maybe we can get our government affairs on uh, with you guys and talk about what might be next for uh, what comes after IIJA. Absolutely. Sounds great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And again, this has been Engineering Influence Podcast from New York Council of Engineering Companies. We'll see you next time.